keep quiet. Hey, enter that car. Make any move or blow your brains off. Open that door, open that door. Whoa! I move this car. that were arrested you by mistake? Huh? We know who you are. Pastor Timothy of Omega Dynamic World Assembly. Huh? We know who you are. That famous church where men and women from this city go to deposit millions into your account every Sunday as tithes. If you know me, sir, what do you want from me? Uh, I will answer that question, but first let me ask you. Do you know the reason why your church is filled to capacity every Sunday? People come to my church every Sunday because we preach the word of God undiluted. Uh, People come to my church just because of that. And the Lord has been faithful to his promises. Uh, his word cannot go back in vain. Bullshit. Around nonsense. What the hell do you preach more than every other pastor in this town? Tell me the truth. You tell me. Huh? Your church is filled to capacity every Sunday because we let it do so. Do you understand me? I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand. You don't understand? All right. I'll make you understand. As from next week, you're required to pay a monthly tax of 5 million naira into this account. The tax is perpetual and if you default at any time, the church will be reduced to rubbles and uh, maybe your body will be found in the rubble, who knows, if you're unlucky. If you're lucky, you may have taken to your heels. I'm sorry sir, but who are you? I'm Bruno. They call me sir Bruno. I'm the Lord of Cardinal Crusade. I'm the owner of this town. We have monopoly over the instruments of violence. Come back here. I'm not through with you. Now, this discussion never took place. Okay? You were not even here today. And because no other ear must hear what transpired here today. Because if it happens, then I'll send my boys to Joss to kill your parents. You know my parents live in Joss? Not only your parents. I know the whereabouts of every one of your siblings. And you know something? We shall kill every one of them slowly. You understand? So be wise. Don't let anybody hear about this because if it happens, they are dead, and your church reduced to a rubble. You will not blame me for that. Take him to the streets. That's money. It's getting cold and it is getting late. Don't worry, Mom. I'll eat. That is what you will say every other night. At the end, you will not eat your dinner. My dear, you are not helping yourself. I understand that people are mindful of what and when they eat these days. But you don't have to starve yourself to death. 
go and eat your dinner. I have asked you severally, and you have consistently turned me down. What do you want? I want to know everything about the circumstances surrounding my father's death. I am no longer a child, mother. I want to know. I'm a graduate. I've asked you to explain to me, but you have continuously rebuffed me. And I have told you, Sarah, that your father died five years after your birth. It was unfortunate, but that is what happened. I have this feeling he was killed. Mother, you have to talk to me. I am no longer a child. I have a right to know. I have a right to know. Why are you suddenly this concerned? Your father died and was buried in peace. He may have been buried in peace, but I'm sure he didn't die in peace. I see him in my dreams, mother. He looks worried, unhappy, sad. <sighs> mother, you have to tell me all you know. You have to tell me so I can see what I can do, anything to help him rest in peace. For all we care, the person who killed father might still be walking around freely. You have to talk to me. It's okay. It's okay. Now, go and eat your food. I will tell you after you must have eaten. You promise? I promise. I promise. If he doesn't pay up, I'll raise his check down. People are beginning to take my leniency for weakness. I am the one managing the secrets of A and D Incorporated. I have enough information on that company to sink it. Why they are beginning to play pranks with me, I don't understand. Sir, suffering in silence is never part of professionalism. Sir, I want you to tell us what you want us to do, and to what level do you want us to take this thing to? No, we're not in a hurry. I don't want you to be in any hurry at all. I want to have enough time to think. In my own opinion, bros, I think the amount we are getting from A and D is small. Maybe that's why they don't take us seriously. So I suggest we increase our pay to 3 million naira monthly. In that way, they might take us seriously, sir. I have informed them that from now on, it will be 4 million naira every month. And they have not responded yet. So I think a hit should be the next option. So we should all wait for that hit. Because that's what it requires now. Mm. Can I use your lighter, please? And who the hell are you? I'm Frances. Can I get a lighter from you guys? Take the lighter. And don't you ever interfere in other people's business, okay? Hey, Todd, don't be too hard on the girl. She's just a friend. Baby? Frances? Come on, beautiful girl. Come on, have a seat here. Hmm? Oh, she looks good. Come on, sit down. And tell me why you are here. see your life? If not because I respect you, I would have gone. You gave me an appointment. Wait for me until 10. And then you turn your phone off. Look at the time. 11.30 in the night. And you're walking in here. I'm very sorry. You know, some other things kept me really busy. Really, I'm sorry. Okay. May I know the reason why you asked me to wait here? 
see, I, I really don't like the way you are treating this man from Cardinal Crusade. I can't believe this. Are you telling me that the reason why you ask me to wait here is for us to begin to discuss Cardinal Crusade? Is that, is that what you're talking about? San Bruno is a very dangerous man. He's a radical. Other people working for him understand one language, destruction. I don't want us to ignite their anger. Have you finished? What do you mean by that? You don't know? Have you managed to pick up a calculator and see the percentage? Somebody you are paying one million naira every month suddenly is asking you to pay four million naira. And you are telling me that I have to stay here and discuss that? You told me to wait here. That you want us to discuss something. And I was thinking it's something that has got to do with the welfare of this company. And you are talking of Cardinal Crusade? Why are you doing this? You want me to pay the four million naira or what? This is not just about four million. It's about negotiation. We are in business. So are they. You sit down, they sit down, we, sit down, we negotiate and, and arrive at, at a compromise. You get, you get the security to lock up this place and out of it. Please. Sorry. I'm so, I'm so disappointed you wasted my time. Are you still lying down? Look at the time. It's supposed to be up from bed by now. Are you not the one I am talking to? What is the matter with you? Can't you even say good morning to me? You forced me to eat late last night against my wish. Promising you're going to tell me everything you knew about my father's death. You said nothing. And now you expect me to be excited? And then say good morning. But I have told you I knew nothing about it. Your father died and was buried. That is all I know. That's all you think you know. But that's not all to it. Well, you are free to find out what is correct. But God knows if I could do anything to help, I would do it. But now, I am off to the market. Please clean everywhere. I will not be back early. to believe that you are hiding something from me. There's a difference between a man that is hiding something and a man that is not willing to speak. I am fine. But ever since you came back yesterday, you've been behaving awkwardly. Tell me, is there anything going on? I am your wife. Why are you pressing this? You are my wife, no doubt, and I love you so much. Then tell me. The reason why you are behaving as someone who is under attack. Or has it anything to do with those people you called yesterday to say they were trailing you? I had a rough encounter with some men that are suspected to be part of the mafias in the city. What did they say? Tell me, what did they want? I want you to forget about it. I want us to focus to the church. God has blessed us so much. And I don't want anything to come in between us. Please forget it. Yes, go and sit down, I'm coming. Um, 
Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, I sent for you because certain things are not right. Certain things are What do you mean certain things are not right? The country itself is not moving well. Nothing is right. So I don't understand certain things are not right. I'm not talking about the country. I'm talking about our family, the family of you and I. The family of you and I? Yes. I don't understand. Did you hear anything? Alice came here yesterday. She asked me some thought-provoking questions. When she left, I was asking myself some questions. And many things do not gel. <laughs> Give back. You are still speaking in parables. Alice wanted me to explain everything I knew about her father's death. In fact, she was of the opinion that her father was killed. <laughs> Richard that died years ago. What do you intend to achieve by opening up a case that has been resolved years ago? I'm not opening any case. I told you that Alice visited me yesterday to inform me that she wants to open up a case that, uh, uh, according to her, Richard appeared to her several times urging her to find his killers. Richard appeared to her? Yes. In fact, you guys are kidding. Nobody is kidding. The problem with you is that you never take things seriously. And that is not the, the character of a real man. Huh? I never take things seriously? Yes. I never take things seriously, eh? What do you want me to take seriously here? Eh? Richard that died many years ago. And you are now telling me that he's appearing somewhere. Listen, let me tell you, Gilbert. I am not ready to sit down here with you and listen to all this rubbish or cock and boo stories. If you don't have something to tell me, I'm going. You are not going anywhere. Meaning? You will stop me? No. But you must sit down so that we could resolve this matter. Talk See, it could be our brother who was killed. Mm. It could be our brother who is frustrating our efforts. Mm -hmm. Look at you. 44 years you are not yet married. Look at my workshop. I found it difficult to pay my bills. The spirit of our brother may be is against us because we've done nothing, absolutely nothing to find or punish his killers. Can't you just think? What is there to think? Giba, tell me, what is there to think? Listen, let me tell you something. That I am not married today is my business. Yes, it is personal. It is very, very personal. It has nothing to do with spirit or ghost. Let me tell you something. That you can no longer foot your bills, this, that, or whatever. Is because of the economic state in this country. It is not because of spirit or ghost. So don't, don't even go there. I, I want to go and do something, attend to some business. Maybe we talk about all these things some other time. Eh? I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I never saw these documents. Could it be?
we've walked almost 75 minutes without seeing anybody. Eh? What kind of people will do business in this kind of place? My friend, be a man and follow me with faith. We will soon meet the men. Oh, brother. Will you still give me the money you promised? But you have not told me what you want to do with the money. Okay. I will set up a business. As soon as I do that, I will get married. <laughs> Listen. I will not only give you the money. I will open ways for you. I will make sure that you grow beyond your imagination. In fact, I will change your name to success. Because you will grow from one success to the other. Believe me, I'm going to do it. Hey, brother, brother, thank you. Brother, brother, Jay, Jay. From my house. Uh, what happened? Where then are you running? I saw Richard. In fact, I have seen what you say Alice sees. There is trouble. Uh, what do you mean? I was coming back from the business I told you earlier today. And I went straight home to take rest. I now slept up and dreamt. I saw Richard took me to a lonely path where he disappeared and they exposed me to an ancient warrior who wanted to kill me. I woke up. It was a dream. My brother, eh? I have never witnessed this kind of dream since I was born. This is serious. Nightmares normally come in the night. To see nightmares in the daytime <laughs> is something real serious. That is why I ran straight here. I don't want to witness this kind of dream again. Have you seen what I'm saying? Alice must not be ignored. Yes. Gilbert, I have seen it. Hmm? Have you seen these documents before? No, I have not. Where did you get them from? Do you know any company called Agrippa Investment Limited? Yes. Huh? I used to know the company. But the company is no longer in existence. Was father part of that company? How do you mean? I mean, did father have any business relationship whatsoever with that company? Your father was a very conservative person. He operated a loan. If I tell you that I don't know the banks where he kept his money, you will not believe it. I tried all my best when he died. But the bank dismissed me for lack of documentary support, but I know that the banks are still keeping his money. In essence, mother, you are saying that whether or not father had a business relationship with that company, you don't know? Exactly. I don't know. What did you see in the paper? I'll tell you later. Mother, do you know who owns Agrippa Investment Limited? My dear, you ask too many questions. Agrippa Investment was a big company. It was too big to be owned by one person. Besides, the company has died. That's all you know? That is all I know. I want to trace the owner of Agripa Investment Limited. My dear, 
will you start from? To trace a company that died more than 10 years ago? Why are you searching for the company? What? I'm actually here in line with my investigation about um, Agrippa Investment Limited. I don't know, the last time I came here, you said something about it folding up years before we were born. And I was wondering if you found out anything new. I'm not supposed to do this. Listen, I know. Just assume you're doing this as a favor for a lady like yourself. I honestly believe my father had something to do with that company and that's why I've come to see you. Because you are an official of the Corporate Affairs Commission. Please, I beg you. What else have you found out? Agrippa Investments Limited merged with Defcon Transvanity Limited. The two companies now answer A and D Incorporated. That's the company, that's the name we have in our records. If you want information on Agrippa, I'll advise you go to A and D. I suggest you know where that is. It, 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 sure, it, yes, yes. And cost problems. That's money, the power of money. understand what I am saying. We are giving these people too much space. We are giving them too much respect and that's why they believe we are cowards. How can you explain this? I am, I am paying a man one million naira every month for doing practically nothing. And he's not satisfied. He's asking me to pay four million naira every month. What is he doing? How much are we making in one month? How much? You are mixing up a whole lot of issues here. Really? The organization is evil. Yes, I agree. Thank God you know. But they are powerful. Powerful? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. You can't go on there. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. You can't go in. So I told me you're having a meeting. You pushed me down and continue to your office. What are you doing in my office? <laughs> you have an office? Did you hear that? You are sitting down in my office and you are asking me if I have an office? What kind of fortune is that? See, I could have sent my boys to come and see you. But I had to come myself. You know why? To make you understand the urgency of it. There is nothing urgent around here. There is nothing... No, listen, there is nothing urgent around here. Why can't you go and find a business to do? Why can't you just go and find a business? Why are you going around making everybody? You can't continue like this. You call it milking. I call it my business. And let me tell you, boy. By tomorrow, if you don't pay up as you're expected to do, I'll come and level this place down. If your dead body is found in the rubbles, too bad. I, I, I am going to pay you the one million naira that we have always paid. I'm not going to pay the four million naira. Oh, I shouldn't go and look for another business. As you advised. Now listen, my boy. You pay the four million naira. Okay? As you were told. Because if you don't do exactly as you were told, 
whatever happens to you will be your responsibility. I hate this man. That was not what I expected you to do. You are causing problem for everybody here and I don't like it. Benson, what are you talking about? I should begin to do what? I should pay you four million naira? How do you explain that? The approval we have is for one million naira. I can't pay four million. I'm not asking you to pay him four million. It's all about negotiation. Listen, he can accept 1.5 or even two million. All you need to do is go to the casino or wherever he is, sit down with him and negotiate. You have to iron this thing out this night. Now listen to me. I am not a terrorist. That man I just left here now is a terrorist. And I cannot sit down and negotiate anything with a terrorist. Second, I don't go to casino to do anything because I'm a Christian. <laughs> What's funny? I know you're a Christian. I am a Christian. That man that just left here, he's a Christian. And whoever owns the casino is also a Christian. We are Christians. Listen, I am not asking you to go to the casino and fool around. What I'm asking you to do is business negotiation. That's what I'm talking about. By the weekend, the colors. Oh, because of the love of money. It can be good. Good. All bad. bad. We cannot dismiss Alice as a child. She is free to develop a mind of her own. And a lot of things point to the fact that she may be right that if Richards was killed. I don't understand. Etherbat, who takes nothing serious, was shocked to the marrow some days back. Etherbat? Yes. What happened? Richard appeared to him in a birthday dream. With an Asian warrior that would have killed him. When he woke up, he found out she was dreaming. He ran to my workshop to confirm that at least may have seen one of you things. This is unbelievable. How come he has appeared to everybody and he has never appeared to me? He has also never appeared to me. But as a man, I now know that a lot of things are not right in the family. How do you mean? Before the death of your husband, Richard, our family was a promising family. There was progress everywhere. But since he died, it appears like if there is a cloak covering everybody. My business is no more flourishing. Look at it, but as old as he is, he's not married. And he's not thinking about that. Coming to that one, Ethelbert is thinking about marriage. He told you that? He wants to marry me. He has proposed to me even more than 10 times. You are not serious. I am serious. I don't know what gives him the impression that I would like to marry him. Good evening, Uncle. Oh, my dear, how are you? Fine. Mommy, good evening. My baby. You're back. Yes. Cool. Thank God you're here, Uncle. I was actually thinking of coming to your workshop. I needed to discuss some things with you. Oh. Is there anything the matter? Well, I asked my mother here some questions. She says she doesn't know. So I wanted to come and ask you to know if you knew something. Well, it depends on what you want to know. <sighs> Uncle, did my father ever discuss his business with you? I mean, do you know of any relationship he has with Agrippa Investment Limited? Um, your father was rather a very tough person. He can discuss any other thing with you, but in terms of his business, <laughs> he will abandon you. So I never know anything about his business. He never discussed his business interests with me. I already told her the kind of father she had, but she wouldn't listen. She wouldn't understand it. I found a document, a document confirming that my father had a business understanding with Agrippa Investment Limited. Really? 
Yes. What and what did the document say? I don't know much for now, Uncle. But when I lay my hands on anything, I'll tell you about it. Ah, okay. When you run off, just let me know. I will. Okay. I believe me. Madam, we must all come together to pursue the truth. If actually my brother Richard was killed, <laughs> we must do something for him. Anyway, if there is anything I could do to help, definitely I will do it. There's no problem. Thank, Thank you so much, Uncle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> No Hello, please. I am wondering if you could be of help to me. Depends on the kind of work you ask. What's your name, sir? What do you want? Okay. My name is Larry Okafo. Precisely, they call me Mr. Okafo. I am a chief executive of a thriving company. Naturally, I shouldn't be in this kind of place. Then why are you here? I am looking for a man called Sabruno. I called him on phone and he said he's within this environment that I should ask around that I met you and I'm asking you. Where do I see him? Go to the VIP bar there. He's right there with his men. You have to be very careful. Now go straight to the point. Sir. I came around to inform you that the four million naira you have asked us to pay is unrealistic. We the managers of the company are not the owners of the money. We manage the money for the owners of the company, you know them, the board of directors. And we have a prover we can only overspend by fifty percent. So the four million naira you are asking us to pay is not possible. We cannot pay four million naira, sir. I hate it when my leniency is being misjudged. Yes, sir, sir, with all due respect, sir, I can say that your leniency is not being misjudged. I came here to explain our position to you because I am guided to say that you will not be able to understand if I didn't explain. And that's why I took the risk of coming here this night to explain the situation to you, sir. In essence, how much are you willing to pay? Uh, so, in line with the approval I have, I can pay you a million and a half. A million and a half. <laughs> I'm a professional, and so I understand others. Thank you. I will take two million naira from you last, and the payment will be on Monday. If you fail, I will carry out my plans. Sir, sir there will be no need for you to carry out the said plans. Because what you are asking me to do is going to be very hard. For me to pay you anything above 50%, I have to get approval from the board. And this approval takes time to come, sir. I, 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 I think you, you, you can understand this. All right. Okay. Pay the 1.5 now. And I'll give you two months to get your so-called approval. If you fail to do so, don't blame me. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I am, I am impressed. At least the meeting has managed to yield something tangible. It is not absolutely a waste of time. Two months is enough time for me to get the approval that I need to pay you what you want. Thank you very much, sir.
the car. I have to be on my way now. Let me see you off to the car. No need, no, no need. I know where my car is. You can't walk here alone, some gas will just fix on you, so let me see you off to the car. The criminal network in this city is growing rapidly. And if we fail to tame its evil, I'm afraid sight might also consume the police force. Well, can you just uh, talk in specifics? Uh, I, I don't understand what criminal network you're talking about. I'm talking about the mafia body in this city, sir. They are led to have monopoly over instruments of violence, sir. Businesses are forced to pay taxes to them on a monthly basis. And I'm talking about millions of naira too. As we speak, sir, reports reaching me say they are also facing these churches. How do you mean? A certain pastor, Timothy, was approached. In fact, he was kidnapped. And he was placed on a monthly task of 5 million naira. Else, they will reduce his church to dust. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, blow up the church or something? Exactly what they told the pastor, sir. Sir. According to them, they say the only reason why people come to his church is because they, the Mafia, allow them to. If the pastor fails to pay them this five million naira monthly, sir, they would stop his congregation from trooping to his church. I mean, what's all that? Stopping congregation from trooping into the church? I mean, how are they going to do that? I don't know, sir. But the truth of the matter is that I'm out to dismantle their network. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, this is not something we should start hurrying about, okay? You need to give me time to conduct my own investigation. All I just want from you is the dossier you have on this group. Well, sir, I've already prepared a dossier. Good. But I'm still gathering information on the Mafia. But still, I can tell you what I have. I can rely on nailing the Mafia real hard. Inspector Gide, I am the area commander here. And you report to me. I mean, what's this heat and heat all about? All you need to do is let me have your dozier. Let's see what we can do with it. And then from there, we can begin to talk. Okay, sir. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, coming. Uh, this one ah. you ask it, Are you alright? Welcome, good morning, Gilbert. Good morning. How is everything? No problem. Ah. This one you are in my house this morning, I hope. There's no problem. I went to Richard's widow yesterday and I discussed the issue with her. Like me, she was also beginning to believe her husband was killed. <laughs> So what do we do? I also met Alice. She asked me if I know anything concerning business understanding Richard had with Agrippa Investment Limited. Well, Agrippa as a company has been expelled from the less con of companies. I know. But do you know if Richard had any business understanding with them? You were closer to Richard than myself. And if you don't have knowledge of Business understanding. I don't know. Anyway, Alice is coming to my workshop later today. She says she found a document that suggests Richard had a business link with them. The document? Yeah. I don't know about that. Um, one more thing, Ethelbert. Why would you make married proposals to Alice's mother without mentioning it to me? Why? <laughs> Gilbert, she told you so. Of course. How else will I know if she didn't tell me? Has she accepted the proposal? Oh, you have not answered my question. What are you asking? Why would you make that kind of proposals without my knowledge? Mm. Why? How is it your business? It's my business. And what does that mean? <laughs> Gilbert, listen, let me tell you something. That woman might not be young. 
she might not be extremely beautiful but i tell you something she is the only woman that possesses all i needed for a wife she's good she's cute could you imagine since her husband died she has remained calm nobody visits her in her house in fact i think the best thing to do for her is to marry her so you are saying this hmm. Well, I am sorry, Mr. Kauri, but I think uh, you have to write something that is more detailed. I'm not comfortable with what I'm seeing here. Please. Have you made a deposit? Yes. The 1.5 I paid in was the least. Some others were paying 2 million, 3 million. A lady actually paid in 5 million. I don't get it. I can't understand how they've been able to hold all these companies to ransom. Bessie, may I know the names of these other companies that were paying them money? I didn't get them. I don't know. So what do you make of these developments? This syndicate is controlling this city. They've caged everybody. They control everybody. They've converted every company to their paymasters. They do practically nothing, yet people are paying them heavily. Am I not vindicated? Are you not beginning to talk like somebody who actually passed to professors? Cardinal Crusade or whatever thing they call themselves, as far as I'm concerned, is a busybody. And we have to, you know, treat them as a corporate entity that is driven by law and due process. You understand what I'm saying? I really do. Yes, I wonder what is it? Excuse me, sir, there is a girl now. Who is she? She said her name is Alice. Alice? I don't know anyone called Alice. But send her in. Excuse me. Maybe I should uh, step out so you could have time to chat with this Alice girl. Well, just be careful, this says hello. And um, you never can tell. Do you actually think that this company is one of those useless companies that one girl can come in and ruin? She could be one of those Jezebels that could run down this company. Benson, please go. Good day, sir. Good day. Good day, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Please, are you the boss of this big company? <laughs> you know, when wonderful people like you say something good about this company, you know, my head grows bigger. Are you the boss, sir? No, I am not the boss. I am actually the general manager. The guy that just left here is Benson. He is the one in charge of domestic operations. If I must tell you, this company doesn't belong to any one man. It belongs to some shareholders and they appoint uh, managers to run the place. I understand that Agrippa Investment Limited actually merged with another company called Devcon Transvanity Limited to become A&D Incorporated. Who are you? I mean, didn't you see the sign outside the gate there? That we don't want journalists inside this compound? No, sir. I... I'm, I'm not a journalist. Then who are you? And why are you asking me technical questions? The merging of Agrippa and Defcon actually led to the vibrant company we now have here, A&D Incorporated. You know what? Level up to me. Do you want a job, please? Do you have a job? Well, presently, I don't have any job. But if you are here to get a job, I can create a job for you. Forget about the qualification because you are qualified. How are you sure I'm qualified? Why? What are you talking about? We are those that are giving out these jobs. We create the jobs, we give them out. We know those that are qualified. Forget the paper qualification because that is nonsense to me. Me looking at you, looking at you from head, pan you down to your legs, I know you are qualified. I can give you a job. Well, I, I must say I'm honored. I mean, I came here to make inquiries about Agrippa. And here I am, getting a job. Thank you. Do you know what? I wanted to write the application fast and submit it. If you cannot try the application, you tell me. I will even help you to develop the application. Excuse me, sir. I can actually read and write perfectly. I'm a graduate. You're a graduate? Yes. Of what? Philosophy and English. Philosophy and English? And your name is Alice? Yes, sir. As in Alice? Alice. Alice, right? Alice. The message was quite uh, urgent. Uh, so I had to abandon everything I was doing. So I would, you know, come and see you. 
I don't like your operations. What, what did I do wrong, sir? I engineered your promotion. I also worked hard for you to get transferred to the city because I wanted us to work together. I wanted to make you a big officer. But I have a feeling that you are a weakling. Yes, you are a weakling. And so I'm going to work extra hard to make sure that you are transferred back to the village where you belong. Because weaklings have no place in my city. Well, with, with due respect, sir, I'm, I'm not a weakling. I'm not an incompetent police officer. But you see, the, the recent problem that I have to grapple with now is, is this Inspector Jide. Who is Inspector Jide? He holds a degree in criminal law and he was drafted indirectly from the force headquarters. And since he came in, he's been creating problems for everybody in the office. See why I call you a weakling? If you have identified this Inspector Jide as a problem, why don't you apply the Russian option? Kill him. Huh? Listen to me, man. I spent a lot of money to run this city. I pay you a lot of money. If the presidency sends a man you identify as a uh, as problem in this city, what are you waiting for? Eliminate him. It's 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 not as easy as you think, sir. What are you talking about? Well, apart from the fact that he holds a degree in criminal law, this inspector had worked in Canada. He, at a point, was the bodyguard to the mayor in Toronto. At some point, he even worked at the Gaza Strip as the only Nigerian who was attached to Israeli anti-terrorist groups. So, he has a vast dose of experience, so such an inspector is not, is not easy to just eliminate like that. You're a coward. That's what you are. See, when a colonel became a thorn in the flesh of some Lebanese, he was beheaded with all the training. You understand? Where does this your uh, inspector leave? Where does he leave? Now that's another problem. The IG himself quartered him at the government guest house. See, everything is a problem to you. Every little challenge is a problem to you. Ah, huh? listen to me. I want this inspector GD eliminated. You understand? Because he's encouraging my hostages to disrespect me. You understand? Okay, it's uh, it's noted, it's noted, sir. You see, sometimes I feel sorry for you. I don't like to remember you at all. Because if I remember you, I keep thinking of the best way to get rid of you. Honestly. Go and have your dinner. I will eat more. Go and eat now. The food is getting cold. Besides, the books are not running away. Mommy, I have a job waiting for me at A and D Incorporated. <laughs> what did you say? I went to the general manager. I wanted to ask questions, and then he offered me a job. So he asked me to write my application and submit it. So I'm trying to proofread so I don't make a mistake. Just like that? Just like that. I thought the man was joking, but he seriously did have a job for me. I'm so excited. I don't want to make any mistake with this application. Anyway, I am not trying to dissuade you, but I am not sincerely happy with your situation with that company. Mommy. Wish me luck. 
I know what I'm doing. Okay. Yes, uh, Zena. What do you want? Sir, my neighbor told me yesterday that she saw my boss. And that is you, sir. In company of some men she suspected were criminals. I did not believe her. I actually was defending you. But when she was done describing you, I was convinced that she must have seen you. Uh, Zena, can you, can you just speak in plain language? Uh, what's this meeting about? Sir, the lady said something that shows she has lost interest in the police force. And as an officer, I was weakened. Saying up, um, I mean, <laughs> is it, is it because I condescended to your level? Because I laugh with you, I crack jokes with you, I laugh with you, that you have the impetus to walk into my office and talk to me, suggesting insubordination. I'm very sorry, sir. But the conclusion you were drawing on me is not fair. The masses are living on the grace of God, sir. And all I wanted us to do is give them hope, as police officers that we are, with our conduct. So you know, No, no, come back here, come. If I ever hear this outside this office, I will not just break your hands in this force, I will break them where? How is work? Oh, work? <laughs> we are not giving up. So long as there is life, there is hope. That is my own. So what can I offer you? Nothing, Uncle. Nothing. I ate at home before I left. Ah. Alice, I don't have any evidence yet. But like you, I'm becoming convinced that your father, Richard, did not die a natural death. I now think he was murdered. But still, I can't figure out why he was killed and who actually killed him. Uncle. I honestly appreciate the measure of support and kindness I'm getting from you and Uncle Etibet. Not to worry. I'm going to figure it out. It might take time, but it's a gradual process. There's no problem. Don't give me your hand. You have all my support. Thank you very much, Uncle. Um, <clears throat> Uncle, I was wondering if I could get transport money from you. I want to get to A and D Incorporated. I've actually asked mom for money too much and I, I don't know how to ask her again. Oh yeah, kid, why you poo? Would this be enough? Uncle, it's more than enough. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, don't mention. Um Alice, if I may ask. What are you going to do at A and T Incorporated? Because that company has a link with the mafia. What are you going there to do? The general manager actually offered me a job. In fact, I'm going to submit my application. The general manager offered you a job? Yes. That's strange. Huh? You must be very, very careful, my dear. I'm very careful, Uncle. I'm very careful. Honestly, you have saved me. I'd already made up my mind that if I don't meet you here, I'll just trek to the company, but now... I can't do anything to make sure that I keep you going. Thank huh? you very much. Don't make sure. I should leave now. Okay.
Good day. Yes, good day. What can I do for you? Sir, can I shut the door? I want to speak with you. Shut the door? And why would you want to do that? Sir, I want to speak privately with you. All right, go ahead, shut the door. And whatever it is you want to tell me, be very professional about it. Don't try anything funny and don't try anything lewd, okay? Sir, I know where you're going, but I'm not here for that. So what are you here for? Please, sir, do not be open to the area commander. And why do you say that? Sir, I'm talking to you because you're a brilliant officer. I admire you so much and you're my hero. Sir, the AC works for the Mafia. He is part and parcel of them and he is on their payroll. So if you have anything against the Mafia, please do not tell him. Because if you tell him, then you've told the Mafia. Well, the police commissioner shares the same view and that's why he asked the Inspector General of Police to send an intelligence officer here. I'm working day and night to confirm that. Sir, you do not need further confirmation. I have worked here for three years and I know everything. The AC wines and dines with that criminal called Sir Bruno. So sir, please, I love to work with officers like you. If you have anything, do not tell him. Well, thank you very much. You may go now. Thank you, sir. Yes, George, I, I'm going to bank on your uh, intelligence to handle this. I'm quite busy in the office. Uh, but if you have to talk to me, then uh, you can always call. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to make it down. Uh, all right, good. That will be good. Uh, thank you. Sir, you say something? Yes, enough. Sit down. Zena, what do you think about me? I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand. Okay. Now, when you look at me, what goes through your mind? That you're a very intelligent officer, and that's why you're the area commander. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, you know this friend of yours who told you that she saw me in company with criminals? I want to know her name. Linda, sir. But oh. she has traveled to Dubai. All right. Um, when she comes back, you, you tell her I'd like to see her. Yes, sir. But I... I hope you do not have any problem with what she said. <laughs> you know, Zainab, I am a trained police officer. I don't have a problem with anything. Nothing creates problems for me. I just, I just want to see your friend. Okay, when will you start constructing all this furniture you've been drawing? Every time you keep on drawing and drawing, but you never construct any. Okay, I didn't call you for us to talk about furniture. Mom, so why did you send for me? Alice came here this morning. And so what? Alice came here this morning. What about it? She said um, she met with the general manager of A&D. He offered her a job. She has gone to submit the application. You see what I mean? 
she went to submit an application for a job that has already been given to her. I suspect that manager is up to something. Listen, let me tell you. Please, warn her and advise her to mind the way she deals with men. Because, if not that Alice is my niece, I would have married her. Ethel, do you know you are becoming a jester? First, you want to marry her mother, and you want to marry her too. See, I have money. Ego. But there is no good wife. Ladies, 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 here and there. But no one is good enough to be a wife. How will you define good? Define good? Yes. You have fitting under the cloak of looking for good for 40 years. Your, your situation is becoming an embarrassment to the family. You are welcome. Don't insult me. I am sorry if you take it as an insult. But I only call you for you to go to A and D company and know how Alice is faring. You see what I'm saying? I should go to the company and know how Alice is faring. See, that girl, Alice, is a big girl. And besides, she's a graduate. She can always take care of herself. Okay? Do not send this kind of message to me again. Ethel, Richard will do that for you. Why can't you do it for his own daughter too? Now I see. This is a deliberate attempt to get me angry. But I won't fall for it. Gave me 200,000 naira wardrobe allowance immediately. Yes! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Don't take it as if I am not happy. But are you sure you are not walking into danger? Companies do not give wardrobe allowance to young, inexperienced employees. I am not walking in danger. We are going out to celebrate. Come on. Come on, mom, let's go dress up. ask you a very simple question. What course did you read in the university? I read marketing, sir. You see what I mean? You read marketing. You see what I mean? Men are made to work where they do not have basic training. Miserable square pegs are being forced into miserable round holes. That is the problem in this country. Men who never won any technical case as lawyers are made ministers for justice and attorney generals of the federation. Listen to me, I called you here to inform you that I am not ready to continue in that kind of nonsense. So I don't understand. I am doing well as an office secretary. That's not the point. Can you show me one single certificate you have on secretarial studies? Just one certificate? No, sir. Right. You have been transferred to the marketing department. 
that is where you are qualified to be. And this transfer is with immediate effect. But, but Don't give me any bit. Mr. Kaure, the head of the marketing department, has been briefed. And he's waiting for you to resume there as a marketing officer. And Amanda, I want to wish you success in your official endeavors. Thank you very much. You may leave now. Excuse me. There is always a time when nonsense must end. Yes, uh, Inspector. I uh, I asked for a dossier on the activities of this mafia. I mean, I haven't seen it. Why haven't you given me that dossier? So I want the information you inherited on the activities of the Mafia. You gathered and developed yourself. I want to gather your information and mine to produce an authentic dossier, sir. Well, I didn't inherit any dossier or information and I didn't prepare any one by myself. Then there's something fundamentally wrong with the police in this city. What are you talking about? Serious criminals operate in this city illegally. They become so powerful that churches and businesses fear them. They eliminate people anyhow. And the police in this city, both past and present, do not have any information on their activities. Sir, that is a dent to the image of the police force. And that is why I said there's something fundamentally wrong with the police in, in this city. So, are you putting the blame on my office? So your office is saddled with the responsibility of policing this city and if that job is not diligently done, then sir, I blame it on your office. You have no right to insult me. You're only an inspector. I am not insulting you, sir. But I say your office hasn't been fair to the masses of the city. They look up to the police for protection. And in a situation whereby the masses feel that the police are part of the Mafia, then that is one ugly, embarrassing situation that needs addressing, sir. You know what I want you to do? I want that dossier prepared and given to me immediately. So I am not presenting my dossier until I have the information you have on the Mafia. And if you say you don't have any information, then I don't have any information for you as well. Do you, do you realize that I'm your boss. Do you realize that you take orders from me? I take ultimate orders from the man who sent me here, the Inspector General of Police. Have a nice day, sir. What's the matter with you? How could you budge into my office like that? Who is she? Who? The girl at the secretary's desk. Who is she? Oh, Alice. Alice is my new secretary. And she's doing wonders already. You employed a new secretary? What happened to Amanda? You fired her? Sit down. No, how can I fire Amanda? Now, how can I? Now, you listen to me. I transferred Amanda to the marketing department. I realized that Amanda read marketing. And leaving her here to work as office secretary is doing the service to her. So I came to the conclusion that sending her to the marketing department is the best thing we can do. And that's what I did. She's now working in the marketing department. And what do you know about the new girl? She started work only this morning. And I, I think I, I have to know her with time. You know nothing about her, and you employed her as a secretary in this office? <laughs> Benson, if we have to employ only those we know, now you tell me, who will employ those we don't know? See, I, I, I don't bother myself with things like that. But you've got to understand that this company is unlike others. We can't just employ anybody we see. Benson, listen to me. You don't have to entertain any fear. That girl is working for me. She is answerable to me. Okay? 
This is about appearance, right? Listen, you cannot trust appearance. There's a difference between appearance and, 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 and reality. Why are you like this, Benson? I mean, why are you like this? Must you bring philosophy into every single thing? Appearance and reality, indeed. Very simple thing that has got to do with the secretary working in the office. Please listen to me, Benson. I employed her to work here as a secretary, and I am impressed with what I'm seeing. Please. Thank you. Amanda, just look at you. I have this feeling that you will never grow old. Fifteen years after graduation, and you are still looking like an undergraduate. But you know, my, my father had this um, same feeling about you. You know, before he died and I, I took over his shares of the company. Yeah, the glory goes to God. He has been really, really wonderful to me. Let's get straight to the point. Your call was urgent and you sounded uh, frantic. What's the matter? Sir, the GM. The GM has removed me from my office. You know, and I came here because I want you to do something about it. If your father were to be alive, he would do something about it. So please, I want you to do something about it. But his briefs were decisive. I mean, he has the power to hire whoever he thinks would be beneficial to the company. But he has no power to sack anybody that we have approved. He did not fire me. He gave me another. But I don't like the job. I just don't like it. What job did he give you? He transferred me to the marketing department. I don't like that. Why? I have a personal problem with the head of marketing department. I won't be comfortable working under him. Did the GM give you any reasons why he sent you to the marketing department? Yeah, he said I read marketing. I mean, that's all. As an office secretary, I was doing very well. And I think I like the job. If he transferred you to the marketing department because you read marketing, then he's in order. He has not exceeded his uh, powers. You see, I, I don't want to be seen in interfering with the day-to-day -day, uh, running of the company. You know, most managers feel disgusted when business owners interfere in their day-to-day -day running of the business. He has not cut your salaries, has he? No. Okay. Um, I think you have to take the job. The GM runs the company and he has reasons for doing what he did. So you don't get it. The head of marketing department is a habitual philanderer. I mean, he's just an unrepentant humanizer. Trust me, he will make me uncomfortable there. As an office secretary, he used all the tricks to take me to bed. And going to work under him now would be like giving him a direct license for him to mess me up. And I can't take that. We all know that heads of department use their positions to take advantage of young ladies that work under them. But sincerely, there is nothing we can do about it. Mr. Kaori is a marketing genius. He is the best in town. And we, 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 we can't afford to discuss his uh, private life. W whatever he does with his private time should, should, should not be discussed in the company. So what are you saying? I mean, what are you suggesting? Are you suggesting I'm going to sleep with, with Mr. Kaori? Amanda. Amanda. All the ladies do it. I can assure you that the action won't even take long. <laughs> if you have to sleep with Mr. Kaori in order to get the cooperation you need to stand, then do it. But I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say this, but you see, we, we have a credible team running the company. It will amount to killing their spirit and moral. 
if we are thin to interfere in their day-to-day -day management of the company. Take the job, girl, and do what you have to do. How many policemen of your rank, or of any rank, even the IG, carry beards like you? Well, I must say, sir, that I'm about, uh, you know, the only lucky police officer to <laughs> carry this beard. So. You're not giving me credit for my efforts at protecting you and getting you to get, a, getting you to get away with anything in the police force. How much do I pay you monthly? You pay me well, sir. I ask, how much do I pay you every month? Two million. The cover you are giving us is not commensurate with what we are paying. And I called you here to register my displeasure in the strongest possible terms. Well, the truth of the matter, sir, is that there is a serious problem in the office. But I'm doing everything I can to have it sorted out. My boys are getting impatient with you. Well, so you have to tell them to be a bit more patient because I'm putting all efforts on the table to have this whole thing worked out. Look, we want your efforts to be translated into something that can be seen because I cannot have a mayor inspector questioning my business interests in a city that belongs to me and you will be watching without stopping him. No, I'm going to stop him. I'll stop him, sir. I you promise stop him, you. Sure? I'll stop him. My boys are itching. They are itching. They want to get their hands on you. And I will allow them to hit you so hard if you fail to stop that boy from harassing my business in this town. I was I was just thinking, sir. If I get him to your side, would you put him in your payroll? Go and get him to name his prize. Alright. <laughs> Alright, sir. Watch your back. I'll talk to him. Watch your back. Yes. Area Commander, watch your back. I uh, I was told you were here yesterday. Yes, sir, I was. What can we do for you? <sighs> My name is Alice. I'm the daughter of late Richard Nebulisa. I was actually searching through my father's belongings and I saw a letter sent to him by your chambers informing him of your withdrawal of service and advising him to seek counsel in another law firm. Well, sir, I came here yesterday. I saw lots of lawyers, but I personally wanted to speak with you. I wanted to personally ask you if you did sign the letter. Hmm. Um, I would like to see the letter, if you have it there. Yes, yes, I do. Thank you. Yes. I signed this letter. And I remember the events that culminated in our decision to withdraw our services. Can you please let me into these events? Well, your father was a very difficult man. Um, I'm sorry if, uh, if you are not happy with that conclusion. No, it, it was our, our findings. Um, he was a very cunning man and uh, very economical with facts. I mean, but he... He wanted to invest large sums of money in a company and he wanted us to represent him. Our findings revealed that he was, he was not willing to open up. For example, he, would, he didn't want to tell us uh, uh, how much he, he wanted to invest in that company. He will, not, he will not allow us to involve any member of his family. I mean, he. He, 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 didn't, he didn't want us to investigate that company, which is the normal practice. And he, he didn't even, in short, he didn't want us to do anything. All he kept saying was that um, he would pay us any amount we chose, as long as we kept the business secret. Well, 
no responsible law firm would like to have anything to do with such a character. Well, and we told him so. But we still try to um, appeal to him to open up, but all to no avail. So we were left with no option but to withdraw our services. And as soon as he was served the letter, we destroyed our, our, our file. Well, sir, I also found another document in my father's room. The document mentioned millions of money in dollars and also Agrippa Investment Limited. The fascinating thing is that the document is dated 16th of June. According to my mother, my father died on the 18th of June. In between, there was a transaction on the 17th, though that part of the document is completely damaged. But I was wondering, do you think the document and transaction was what my father wanted you to handle for him? Mm, something is not right. That's it too. Oh. Something is not right. How do you mean, sir? See, we sent him a letter of withdrawal on the 4th of June. I'm sure he probably went to um, Estate Chambers, who agreed to represent him. We believe the business transaction was made on the, on the 16th. On the 17th, funds were released to Agrippa. And on the 18th, he died. The same date that those three lawyers were blown to smithereens in their office. Are you confirming my fears that my father was killed illegitimately? I cannot say. I cannot say, but I know that your father was killed for money. Yes, they killed him. They killed the three lawyers who were blown to smithereens so that everything can die like that. I'm so sorry, sir, but I must ask, do you have any idea who would do this or why anyone would do this? I want to get involved, you know. I believe that it was our withdrawal from the case that saved us. Please, can I keep these uh, uh, documents? Why? I want to get to the bottom of this case. And I trust you, sir. My dear, I am a lawyer called to the bar and duly sworn in to serve my clients with ultimate service. Yes, you can trust me. Very well then. I'll see you tomorrow. Good. I shall commence my own investigations immediately. I'll be honored. My pleasure. Take me now. Thank you so much. Thank you, my dear. Now, may I know why you refuse to pay into the bank as we instructed? He ruleth in his powers, and his eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Hey, is it me you are preaching to? Ah! Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let me ask you one question. You that can only kill the flesh and not the living spirit. Can you constitute yourself into an enemy of the great God that divided the Red Sea? Hmm. It's making reference to the Red Sea. Please, I want to see his red blood. The ground opened and swallowed Dayton and covered the ground of Abiram. The fire was kindled in their midst and the flame swallowed the wicked. You are standing there and watching him. I said, I want to see his red blood. I command both of you to surrender under the supremacy of the God of 
Wrong information. Wrong information? Yes. How? I, I don't give out wrong information. That's your Pastor Timothy of the. Uh, What's the name of your church? Omega Dynamic World Assembly. Omega Dynamic World, World Assembly. He's not an ordinary man of God. As you made me believe. What are you talking about? That man is my pastor. And I know him very well. He's currently lusting after all the ladies that sing in our choir. He's currently lusting after all the women in your church? Mm -hmm. huh. Let me ask you this question. Has he slept with you? I'm sorry, Sir Bruno, but I don't understand all these questions. I already told you that Pastor Timothy is my pastor and we can make him pay. Only last Sunday, this man realized over 16 million naira from Titan offerings. <laughs> Admittedly, he's a hard nut to crack. But getting him to pay into your account monthly, oh, that is surely good business for the house. I saw that man in my dream and he looks very dangerous. This business may go wrong and you won't like what I'll do to you, honestly. Okay. It won't go wrong, okay? You know why? Because I'm fast. Hmm? And your baby never fails. You know that, right? Trust me. Now come here. Come to bed. So, my dear, if you are sure you want to marry, then I can assist you get a wife. Why? Why are you saying a thing like this? Huh? Why would I want a wife when I have someone like you? <laughs> you tend to forget that I was married to your brother. Why are you permanently hoping for the impossible? See, whether permanently or not permanently, I know you are my brother's widow. But I want you to understand that for the fact that my brother is no more is not the end of the road for you. You need a man. You need to marry. And uh, you are saying, marry, marry, marry. Now I am ready for marriage. I want to marry you. But the problem is, are you ready to accept me? Hmm. God. God. Do not take it as if I am being difficult. The feeling I have for you is very, very different. You should try and understand me. Good evening, Uncle. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Uncle. Yeah. Good you returned late today. I hope you saw. Everything's fine. I actually want to see a lawyer. A lawyer? Lawyer? Is anybody suing you or you're suing someone? No. <laughs> no, Uncle. I actually have a document I wanted him to help me interpret. Oh, all right, I see. You're welcome. The choir master came here to complain that we don't attend choir practices anymore. But I told him you'll attend tonight. For what? Can't you see she needs some rest? She's just coming in. Eh? Besides, must everybody, everyone be in the choir? Please, at least go in and take your shower and rest. Thank you. You don't have to give her such advice. Young girls should be encouraged to participate in church activities. I agree with you. But one has to leave first. She needs some rest. The, the, the old women are singing the other day, which means the choir cannot be empty. You know, do you know the golden rule of management? It says, before you tell us how it is done there, you should be able to learn how it is done here. But uh, apparently, you don't understand that law. It depends on what you're talking about, sir. What I'm talking about is that you should face other police duties. 
leave these criminal gangs alone. You see, we met them here. And these are deadly people. I do not want to start fighting criminals with this career of mine. I mean, these are deadly people and they show no mercy. Are you afraid of the Mafia, sir? I didn't tell you that I was afraid of the Mafia. How can I be afraid of the Mafia? It's not possible. But you know discretion, they say, is the better part of valor. I wouldn't want to risk my neck. And of course, the golden rule in politics, if you can't beat them, Inspector Jide, better join them. The police is not a political body, and it would be madness on our part to surrender under the guardians of political maxims. You're simply missing, you're missing, you're missing the point completely. You're missing the point. I want you to know that the police is politics, and politics is the police. I don't ever want you to forget that part as you carry on with your duties. So what are you saying in essence? Leave the gang alone. Leave them alone, Inspector Jide. These guys control the economic status of this city. You can't fight them. Oh, okay, I understand you came here to fight them. Yes, but you can't fight them the way you're carrying on. These are deadly people. What I expect you to do is to be friendly with them. Besides, they pay well. That's the only way you can fight them. When you join forces with them, then you can attack. Not in this way you are going on. If you go on like this, they will destroy you, Inspector Judy. I mean, that's just my advice for you. Do you know the Mafia? I, uh, of course, I, I wouldn't say that I didn't know the Mafia. I mean, if I told you that I didn't know the Mafia, that of course means that I'm just parading myself as the area commander for nothing. Of course I know the Mafia. Do you work with the Mafia? I will not want to be insulted. So you told me to work with the Mafia. They pay very well and they could destroy. Now if I'm to follow your theory, sir, I want to know who else in the police force works with the Mafia. The reason why I asked you, sir, do you work with the Mafia? I, uh, I only know the Mafia. Can you take me to them? Yes. Of course I'll take you to the Mafia. <laughs> but uh, that depends on if you're ready to play the game. Of course I'll take you to the Mafia. Maybe I say I'm ready. So when do we go? People carrying out criminal activities. Good day, sir. You sent for me. Oh, yes, uh, Constable, good day. Um, sit down, please. Ah, uh, yes. So, um, when do you close from work today? 7 p.m., sir. 7 p.m. Uh, do you have any appointments after work? No, I don't. Why do you ask? Well, I would like to do some talking with you. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'd like to take you out tonight. Sir, why don't we go to my place? There we can relax and talk properly. You want me to come to your place? Yes. Do you have any problem with that? <laughs> you don't have a boyfriend who could make a surprise appearance. No, I don't. And why, if I may ask? I don't know why, but I'm telling you the truth. I think the boys are scared of me. I mean, uh, <laughs> a beautiful officer like you doesn't have a boyfriend. That's strange. Sir, maybe you do not understand. Most of the big girls you see around town do not have a boyfriend. And it is not because they do not want to, but because the boys are scared of them. Really? 
Well, this is one lecture I would like to hear in better and greater detail, so educate my ignorance. Sir, you see, the so-called big ladies are searching, praying, dying for companionship. And then the boys are just discussing that they're sleeping around, sleeping around, sleeping around. It would amaze you the kind of guys they date. Mm. Hairdressers, barbers, gym instructors, dry cleaners. Well, you cannot blame them because these are the kind of people that are close to and so they rely on them to make themselves happy. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's all right. Um, you know what, um, why don't you write me your address here? I will come later and then we'll talk in detail. I'll be waiting. I will be there. Yes, Alice, sit down. How are you enjoying your job? Very well, sir. Are you sure? Oh, yes, As in, sir. really sure? <coughs> of course, sir. I am enjoying my job. I want to give you a small responsibility. I'm all ears, sir. The board members, they have approved a facelift for the conference hall. You know, when such minor contracts come up in the company, I normally give to my secretary. So I called you here to ask you, can you handle this? Yes, yes, sir. I just need to know the content of the contract and the budget you intend to execute the contract with. Let us say 15 million naira. The contents will include to replace all the plastic shears in the conference hall with proper furniture. Then the curtains. You have to remove all the curtains, all those aged curtains, and uh, replace with something new, something modern. Maybe the rugs and any other thing that you can replace in the hall to give it a proper facelift. Can you do this? Yes, yes, I can. Good. Now, can you drive? No, sir. No. That means you have to learn how to drive because uh, you need a car. The company can afford to give you a car, but surely we cannot give you a driver. Why, thank you so much, sir. I'll simply register with the driving school immediately. That's good, that's good. Now, I want you to close for the day. Go and begin in time to source for the furniture company that will take up the contract. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. I'll to see you by tomorrow. Yes, sir. I get to be excused. No problem. Thank you, sir. Bye for the day. Yes, sir. Can I help you? I I'm sorry. Can I talk to you for a minute? I mean, I've actually been looking for you everywhere. I know you're angry with me, but it wasn't my fault. I have not said anything to anyone to suggest I am angry with you. He promised me a job. I never knew he was looking at your job. I mean, if I'd lost my job the way you lost yours, I'd be angry with all the parties involved. He said he gave you another job, but I must still say that I am sorry. It's okay. I must say I love your understanding and maturity. It's really a blessing in disguise. But I'm fine. I'm enjoying my new job more than the one you took from me. I'm really happy to hear that. Very happy to hear that. I am Amanda James. And you? I'm Alice. Alice Richard Nebulisa. Did you say Richard Nebulisa? Yes. He was my father. Do you know him? I don't know him. But I think I've seen that name somewhere before. Where? Please, where? I presently can't remember, but when I'm relaxed, I remember. Don't worry, just call me. Let me give you my card. Just keep in touch with me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I thank you for forgiving me. Bye. Yeah. 
I want to advise you like a friend. Be very, very mindful of Mr. Okafo. He can ask for it right there in the office. And we can't turn him down. I mean, I've lost count of number of times he did the same to me. What? I mean, you can't be serious. I am telling you what you must experience soon. Apart from that, he's a nice person. I have worked with him for 11 years and I know him very well. Okay? But please, please, don't say I mentioned this. Oh, no, no, I mean, of course not. I, I, I won't. Be careful. We are going to organize all night deliverance section for all our ladies in the choir. Wow. I had a revelation. Some of our ladies are not fully converted and sanctified Christians. I saw many of them whining and dining with strange men that looked like occult priests. And when we were asking them to come to our side, they were laughing at us. And they were practically kissing these strange men right before us. And before I know it, it cleared from my eyes. And I then realized I had a reflection. This is serious. Do you know who you saw? Yes, I think I saw most of our choir members. My dear, all we have to do is to organize an all-night deliverance section, if possible. Let us invite Pastor Henry. My dear, we have a responsibility to nurture this church, and we cannot afford to give Satan any chance. This is the best time to tell you what's going on. Is anything the matter? Some criminals want me to pay them five million naira every month. What? They allege that they are the owners of this city. And if I don't come up with that money, they will blow off our church. I don't know what you think. All I know is that the criminals cannot hold us down. It's not going to happen. Just pick up your phone and call Pastor Henry. Let us start this deliverance section immediately. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, because you are God. Um, my dear, please don't see it as if I am undermining your abilities. But I am surprised. I don't know why you are surprised, Uncle. I'm here to offer you a contract. You, you said that already. And I do sincerely wonder, what kind of contract? A contract to effect a facelift in the conference hall of our company. Are you the one to give such contract or have you been promoted so soon? Uncle, are you going to do the contract or not? Of course, yes, I can handle the contract. Good. So first thing tomorrow morning, say by 7, I'll come and pick you up, take you to the office, so you can see the conference hall and give us your quotation. There is no need for you to come. Eh? By 6 in the morning, I'll be in your house so that we live from there. Okay, okay. I'll be waiting for you then. There's no problem. Bye. Hey, 
<laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, thank you. I'm sure you concluded I wasn't coming again. No, not at all. I didn't have such thoughts. All right, then. Uh, so where do I sit? The bed, of course. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a seat. Are you sure I'm safe on your bed? Why not? Are you afraid? Come on, sit down. All right. Um, okay. I don't know, what do I offer you? I have soup. I can quickly make you some of it. Well, on the contrary, I'm here for something much more serious. The area commander called me into his office today and I was so shocked at what he had to say. I mean, when he told me he was on the payroll of the Mafia, I looked at it as mere rumor. But with him calling me into his office today, I confirmed everything you alleged. What did he tell you? Well, he said we should forget about the Mafia. You know, um, we shouldn't fight them. They could be deadly and they pay very well. I mean, I was so, so shocked hearing such rubbish from a superior officer. And that's why I came to you to ask you, what do you know about the Mafia? I know he is their leader. His name is Bruno Lawrence, but the people call him Sir Bruno. He used to come to our station before, but he doesn't come anymore. Most of the companies in the city pay royalties to him. Also, most of the unresolved mother cases have been traced to him. You know, I am beginning to feel that he has an influence on the judiciary. Because if you take a case to court against him, it just keeps dragging, 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 and finally it is not mentioned. You know, something tells me that we are going to crack down this gang. But my question to you is, are you ready to partner me? I'm partnering with you already. That's good to know. Um, I'll be with you now. Huh? Um, but yeah. I thought you were sleeping here. You want me to sleep in your room? Are you out of your mind? And you have to be conscious of your personal security. The mafias don't sleep. You know what? Put on some clothes. Meet me outside. I don't sleep in ladies' rooms. Huh? So, Uncle, this is the conference hall. Management actually wants to change these plastic chairs into proper furnishings. The curtains, everything, I think everything. And I was wondering, I mean, why would I give this contract to someone else when my own uncle is a furniture maker? <laughs> if we remove all these uh, plastics and some other things, uh, what would they do with them? Honestly, uncle, I don't know. Um, this one could sit at least um, not less than 400 guests. How did you know that? <laughs> I know the measurement because it's my profession. And um, to implement um, a perfect facelift for this hall will cost your company no less than six million naira. Yes, six million. Did my proposal meet your budget? Well, I will just sit back. You write your proposal, bring it across to me, and then I'll seek approval for you. No problem. If I get the money today or tomorrow, um, by the middle of the month, I will round off the, uh, the contract. I'll see what I can do. So shall we? There's no problem. I thank you very much. Before noon, I'll be back. I'll never disappoint you. Okay. And how far have you gone with the contract? Um, it's all going well, sir. I also intend to paint the conference hall in and out. Not to worry, sir. That's inclusive of the 15 million naira budget. I want to get it. You want to paint the conference hall and it's part of the 15 million naira? Yes, sir. That's good. <laughs> I think I like this. You know, every other day you, you, you come up with something that makes me to like you the more. I'm impressed. Thank you so much. 
I call you actually to tell you that your check is ready with the accountant. You may collect. Thank you so Anytime. Much. Thank you so much. I honestly appreciate the confidence you have in me. No problem. You're I'm welcome. Honest, sir. Go back to work. Thank you. May I? No. Go ahead. Thank Go. you, sir. Um, I understand you're a lawyer. That is correct. So what can I do for you? I understand you're one man who is determined to crush all criminal gangs terrorizing the city. And who told you so? <laughs> I am a practicing lawyer, not just uh, one with a certificate. And in practicing, you get exposed to information. I know that lawyers respect you a lot. And uh, they talk good about you. Um, well, I must say I am honored and encouraged to get in this information from you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, uh, there was this case where three lawyers got blown up in their office. Nothing, nothing could be identified. And the final police report said that there was a, an explosive device in the office and that um, a wrong electrical um, wire uh, caused the fire that ignited the device. If that was the police report, then why are you telling me this now? Because I am now in possession of certain facts that make me believe that um, the police report was a cover-up. How do you mean? A man approached me and wanted me to uh, my chambers to represent him in a business deal. We agreed. But very soon we realized he was not trustworthy. He was very economical with facts. He will not allow anybody to be his witness. Even his family, he, re he, re he rejected, said it was not necessary. He wouldn't tell us the name of the company he was dealing with, where it, where, uh, where it domiciled, the, 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 the country, the amount involved. No. But at the same time, he was offering to pay us double what we agreed if we kept the business secret. So... We wrote him a letter asking him to look for another chambers. That was on the fourth. Three days ago, the daughter of the man wanted to verify from me if I, if I signed that. And he also brought that one. Apparently, after we cut our ties with, with him, he approached Estate uh, Chambers. They agreed to handle his business and they signed an agreement on the 16th. On the 17th, the man released $1.5 million to the other company, Agrippa Investment Limited. And on the 18th, boom, the explosion. But what aroused my curiosity most was the fact that this girl said that her father died on the same 18th. But then I had trusted the police report, but not anymore. Well, sir, I must say that um, this case is uh, worthy of my attention. Yes, I honestly and sincerely believe so. You know, I believe that this is the work, or the handiwork, of the Mafia. Yes. 
there has been a massive cover up that we should unearth. Have you discussed this with any police officer, sir? <laughs> I am a practicing lawyer and uh, we don't like police very much. <laughs> Present company accepted, of course. <laughs> no, I haven't told any police officer, neither do I intend to tell any other police officer. All right. Um, do you have other copies of this document? Yes. Okay, I will um, keep these documents. I'll retain these ones. And if I may have your card, please. Oh, yes, certainly. Yes, all right then. Um, I'll visit you in your office. Huh? Good, good. I'll have that. Okay. Uh, and please don't come back here. What? It could be dangerous. Yes, of course. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll keep in touch. Thank you very much. Hey. How I find you in the job? It's awesome. It's lovely. In fact, they asked me to go learn how to drive because they want to give me an official car. Hey. <laughs> you made the same offer to me, but I rejected it. Why? You see, our society has a very funny way of looking at a single girl who has a car. I mean, they see her as a loose girl, as a corporate prostitute, so... <laughs> I mean, do you think I was excited about the offer? Maybe I'll just refuse it. No, you don't have to. I mean, we don't share the same conviction. It even appears that I was wrong. Why do you say that? Up till now, I am still not married. It therefore follows that the car I rejected was a mistake. So you can go ahead and take the car. I mean, it's your luck. Thank you. Amanda, you promised to tell me what you knew about my father. Please, where did you see that name or what do you remember? I still have not remembered where I saw that name. But I promise you, if I remember, I'll come and tell you. Please, I'm really eager to know. Try and remember. Don't worry, I'm doing my best. I know. Thank you. You <laughs> Thank you. I'm having really so much fun. I know there's lots of work to do, but don't worry, you get used to it. Yeah, I hope I get used to it. <laughs> Where were you last night? Sir, in, in my room, sir. In your room? Yes, sir. Have you been enjoying the best of health lately? Yes, sir. My, my health is sound, sir. Then why have you been sleeping on the counter? Sir, I'm sorry, sir. It won't happen again, sir. I know it won't happen again. Because if it does happen, I'll make sure I keep you under the sun for hours. Alright? Yes, sir. Now you, get me police records of June, July, August 1987. Take your time and bring them to my office, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Uh -huh. Hey, take my card to Yakubu. Tell him to fix my valves. All right? I came to find out how far you have gone, sir. Well, my dear, we are making some progress. Yes. That is all I can say at the moment. Well, sir, I wanted to ask if you needed money to motivate you into real action. <laughs> no, my dear, we don't need money. Um, but um, if you have surplus and you uh, wish to give us your support, oh, we, might, we, we, we shall be most grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to know who killed my father. Yes. Yes, of course. Of course. Do you know that uh, 
Agrippa, it's a company that has metamorphosed into uh, A and D where you work. Of course, I know. So, what are you doing about getting into the archives and looking around to see what you can, what you can get there? I don't even know where the archive is. Are you not the personal assistant to the general manager? Yes. Well, what about his drawers, his files, his, his drawers, you know, his cupboards, you know, what, anything, anywhere. See what you can get. I'll try. I'll try and I'll come back here once I get something. Good, good. Um, ask your mother, um, was there a, a death certificate? There was a death certificate, surely. I mean, I've seen it once in my mother's room. Good. I'd like a copy. I will get you a copy. Good. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It's nice to meet you there. And uh, thank you for the money. You're welcome, sir. Very welcome. <laughs> thank you. I'll take my Oh yes, everything is going according to plan, sir. All right, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Ah, oh, yes. These are the reports, sir. I have reason to believe the June report was tampered with. Some of the pages are missing, and then there are glaring discrepancies in the page arrangements. Oh, good, 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 very good. Um, you may go now, I'll send for you later. Are we going out tonight? No, we are not. Come back here. Look, Zena, I see you as an officer with great potentials. Don't allow sentiments to be cloud your expected rise. What we share is mature, private and civil. You don't have to bring that into this force environment. Do you understand me? Please. I'm sorry, sir. Good. Learn to behave as an officer that you are. All right? I'll send for you later. Thank you. like that. I'm sorry, sir. You better be. Uh, anyway, I, uh, I wanted to remind you of our appointment tonight. The meeting with the Mafia? Of course, the meeting with the Mafia. I'm sorry, I'm not going, sir. Why? I mean, what's your problem? Well, I've already informed them that we are coming. They are waiting for us. You're a compromised officer, I am not. You wine and dine with the same people you empowered to arrest and prosecute for the interest of national peace and order. I am not holding any meeting with your mafia. And when you see them, tell them Inspector Jide is on their trail and watching them very closely. You want to die, hmm? You want to wage war with a gang that have sophisticated weapons, huh? Okay. I also have reasons to believe that you tampered with the police report of June 1987. What are you talking about? Your so-called mafia blew three lawyers to shreds June 1987. 1987 June, another man was deceived into investing $1.5 million into a particular company. Now, the company that received this money metamorphosed into another company June 1987. Now, the reports you have here doesn't show any of such information. And I have reasons to believe that the police report has been tampered with. Reason why I ask you, sir. Is this not the reason why you don't want to get drunk?
transferred. You want to retire in the city? <laughs> you know, a lot of times you fail to realize that you're just an inspector. An ordinary inspector. You're my immediate boss, yes. But you and I know that we are answerable to superior officers in the force headquarters. Now I want the torn pages of the police report, else you face our superior officers. Inspector Judy, are you threatening me? You're already a threat to the image of the police force. And need I remind you, sir, I am not answerable to you. This is a check of five million naira, uncle. You can go and claim the money tomorrow. Please, I want to beg you not to disappoint me. The AGM comes up in two months. I want a perfect job. Five million naira. Hey, you talk if I let us me. Hey, Alice, you have done your own. Just leave the rest for me. My promise to you is that I will finish in just a month. That will make me very happy. Five million. <laughs> I should take my leave now. There's no problem. I will keep searching till I find the truth. I will keep searching till I get to the truth. Good afternoon. You're welcome. Please sit down. Thank you very much. Um, let me get you something to eat. I've just prepared something. No, no. Please, no, thank you. No, no, no. It's, it's been long you came to visit me. You know that. So what's the problem? No, Uncle, no. I actually came to ask if you still do painting contracts. Contracts? <laughs> you see, contract is my business. Apart from painting. As long as the contract pays, I can do it till that. Actually, Uncle, my company wants to give the conference hall a facelift in preparation for the AGM coming up in two months. So, I was wondering if you could take up the painting contract. Yeah, painting aspect of it. Um, is it only painting contracts? Um, yes, there are other contracts, but I gave them to Uncle Gilbert. I specifically reserved the painting contract for you. All right. Um, so, how much are they paying? What is your price, uncle? Um, would they want to paint it with real paint or those paint made in the barracks? The company wants the best. Okay. Is it going to be outside alone or inside and outside? In and out, uncle. Including the fence leading to the conference hall. You know the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. The conference hall. Um, the painting will cost them um, 800,000. Okay, that means you have to come to my office tomorrow. I'll give you a check of a million so you can start up immediately. <laughs> Alex, you see, this kind of contract brings out the best in me. And because of this, tomorrow morning, first thing, I'll use my money to get the paints and the painters. And I assure you, in three days, it is done. That will be awesome. But I honestly have to take my leave now. All right. Thank you. Okay, okay. Bye. Thank you, my dear. Let's send my good. Okay, okay. Wow. I know that people are watching us. You understand? 
It is. Where is the inspector? Sir, there is, there is fire on the mountain. There is problem everywhere. What do you mean there's fire on the mountain? Huh? You got me out here at this ungodly hour and you're not telling me there's fire on the mountain. Eh? What the hell are you talking about? Sir, there is fire on the mountain means that the, the, the inspector has refused to come with me. Look at you. You are an area commander on paper, but in real life, you are nobody. Nothing. You can't even handle an ordinary inspector. Sir. Ah? Huh? That inspector is not ordinary. Meaning what? Meaning he uses spiritual powers. Oh. He uses mystical powers. <laughs> I don't understand the, his ability to, to uncover the truth. Even hidden things. Just this evening, he was asking me about the June 1987 event. He knows the deaths that occurred in that month. He knows about the money. In fact, he knows the exact amount. And for your information, sir, he knows about the company. I mean, it takes a man with spiritual powers to know all of that. How dare you? How dare you reveal such vital information? How dare you allow such information to leak out? How? No, no. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't leak any information. That information didn't leak from my office. We, we covered everything. It couldn't have leaked from my office. He uses spiritual powers. Look, I'm ashamed of you. I pay you good money to cover my ass. Two million naira every month that you collect. And you cannot do anything with it. Huh? Now listen to me. Go and search for that source of information and kill that person. Are you listening to me? Human beings give information to that inspector. Go and look for whoever it is and terminate it from the source now. Because if you don't do so, I will kill you. And I'm giving you three days, three days to do so, or else you are dead. Okay, sir. I, I will, I will do my best. I will do my best. I will do my best. To my perpetual control of this city. We want to understand the simple thing about this whole thing. They look like ours. Can any of you here tell me the true meaning of the rule of law? You are a fool. That's what you are. An idiot. For you to stand there and begin to ask me that stupid question. I am the law. You're not. I am a trained police officer commissioned to save lives and property. You made me compromise that position. I'm here to announce to you that you must pay for that. Boys, I want you to grip this idiot, take him to a secluded area, and teach him to know that I am the law in this city. Fool, you shot my man! And I'm gonna kill you. Ah! <laughs> you, know, you know, it's so good that you killed them for me. I mean, for us too. <laughs> now I can get to work for you, just like I always wanted. Huh. Okay. Stop there! You know, you want to work for
for me? <laughs> I just know that it's people like you that make the gospel of Jesus Christ so cheap. Okay. You want to walk for me? <laughs> What have I gotten myself into? Am I truly a police officer? I compromised myself. I compromised my position. Is this life worth living? I shot myself. Why on earth did I start to fool around with this evil man? I am not going to allow them to destroy me. I won't sit and watch them destroy me. It is fire for fire. I questioned him to get some facts. He was lying. Then I left. Then I gathered, he went to see a friend, unidentified though. Came back, slept, never woke up. This is serious. What exactly do you want from me? The truth. Prof, did you conduct a proper post-mortem on late Richard Nebolisa before writing his death certificate? 